5 of 38 began on March 7, 2008 as a polling aggregation website with a blog created by analyst Nate Silver, sometimes referred to as 538. The website takes its name from the number of electors in the United States Electoral College. In August 2010 the blog became a licensed feature of the New York Times Online. It was renamed 5 of 38. Nate Silver's Political Calculus. In July 2013, ESPN announced that it would become the owner of the 5 of 38 brand and site, and Silver was appointed as editor-in-chief. The ESPN-owned 5 of 38 began publication on March 17, 2014. In the ESPN era, the 5 of 38 blog has covered a broad spectrum of subjects including politics, sports, science, economics, and popular culture. During the U.S. presidential primaries and general election of 2008, the site compiled polling data through a unique methodology derived from Silver's experience in baseball saber metrics to balance out the polls with comparative demographic data. He weighted each poll based on the pollster's historical track record, sample size, and recentness of the poll. Since the 2008 election, the site published articles, typically creating or analyzing statistical information, on a wide variety of topics in current politics and political news. These included a monthly update on the prospects for turnover in the U.S. Senate, federal economic policies, congressional support for legislation, public support for health care reform, global warming legislation, LGBT rights, elections around the world, marijuana legalization, and numerous other topics. The site and its creator are best known for election forecasts including the 2012 presidential election in which 5 of 38 correctly predicted the vote winner of all 50 states. During its first five and a half years, 5 of 38 won numerous awards both when it was an independent blog and when it was published by the New York Times. These included Bloggy Awards for Best Political Coverage in 2008 and Best Web Blog About Politics in 2009, as well as Webby's for Best Political Blog in 2012 and 2013. Genesis and History When Silver started Fiverr38.com in early March 2008, he published under the name of Poblano the same name that he had used since November 2007 when he began publishing a diary on the political blog Daily Kos. Writing as Poblano on Daily Kos, he had gained a following, especially for his primary election forecast on Super Tuesday, February 5, 2008 from that primary election day, which included contests in 24 states plus American Samoa. Poblano predicted that Barack Obama would come away with 859 delegates, and Hillary Clinton 829. In the final contests, Obama won 847 delegates and Clinton 834. Based on this result, New York Times op-ed columnist William Crystal wrote, and an interesting regression analysis at the Daily Kos website of the determinants of the Democratic vote so far, applied to the demographics of the Ohio electorate, suggests that Obama has a better chance than is generally realized in Ohio. 538.com gained further national attention for beating out most pollsters' projections in the North Carolina and Indiana Democratic Party primaries on May 6. 2008, as Mark Blumenthal wrote in National Journal, over the last week, an anonymous blogger who writes under the pseudonym Poblano did something bold on his blog, 538.com. He posted predictions for the upcoming primaries based not on polling data, but on a statistical model driven mostly by demographic and past vote data. Critics scoff. Most of the public polls pointed to a close race in North Carolina, but a funny thing happened. The model got it right. Silver relied on demographic data and on the history of voting in other states during the 2008 Democratic primary elections.
I think it is interesting and, in a lot of ways, I'm not surprised that his predictions came closer to the results than the pollsters did, said Brian F. Schaffner, research director of American University's Center for Congressional and Presidential Studies. On May 30, 2008, Silver revealed his true identity for the first time to his Fiverr38.com readers. After that date, he published just four more diaries on daily costs. As the primary season was coming to an end, Silver began to build a model for the general election race. This model, too, relied in part on demographic information but mainly involved a complex method of aggregating polling results. In 2008, Rasmussen Reports had an apparently short-term partnership with Fiverr38.com in order to include this unique methodology for generating poll averages in their balance of power calculator. At the same time, Fiverr38.com's daily Today's Polls column began to be mirrored on The Plank, a blog published by The New Republic. By early October 2008, Fiverr38.com approached 2.5 million visitors per week, while averaging approximately 400,000 per weekday. During October 2008 the site received 3.63 million unique visitors, 20.57 million site visits, and 32.18 million page views. On Election Day, November 4, 2008, the site had nearly 5 million page views. On June 3, 2010, Silver announced that in early August the blog would be relaunched under a nytimes.com domain. The transmission took place on August 25, 2010, with the publication of Silver's first 5 or 38 blog article online in the New York Times. In July 2013, it was revealed that Silver and his Fiverr 38 blog would depart the New York Times and join ESPN. In its announcement of its acquisition of Fiverr 38, ESPN reported that Silver will serve as the editor-in-chief of the site and will build a team of journalists, editors, analysts and contributors in the coming months. Much like Grantland, which ESPN launched in 2011, the site will retain an independent brand sensibility and editorial point of view, while interfacing with other websites in the ESPN and Disney families. The site will return to its original URL, www.fiver38.com. According to Silver, the focus of Fiverr 38 in its ESPN phase would broaden. People also think it's going to be a sports site with a little politics thrown in, or it's going to be a politics site with sports thrown in. But we take our science and economics and lifestyle coverage very seriously. It's a data journalism site. Politics is one topic that sometimes data journalism is good at covering. It's certainly good with presidential elections. But we don't really see politics as how the site is going to grow. Fiverr 38 launched its ESPN webpage on March 17, 2014. The lead story by Nate Silver explained that Fiverr 38 is a data journalism organization. We've expanded our staff from two full-time journalists to 20 and counting. Few of them will focus on politics exclusively. Instead, our coverage will span five major subject areas, politics, economics, science, life and sports. Our team also has a broad set of skills and experience in methods that fall under the rubric of data journalism. These include statistical analysis, but also data visualization, computer programming and data literate reporting. So in addition to written stories, we'll have interactive graphics and features. 2008 U.S. Elections Methods weighting of polls One unique aspect of the site is Silver's efforts to rank pollsters by accuracy, weight their polls accordingly, and then supplement those polls with his own electoral projections based on demographics and prior voting patterns. I did think there was room for a more sophisticated way of handling these things, Silver said.
Fiverr38.com weighs pollsters historical track records through a complex methodology and assigns them values to indicate pollster introduced error. Polls on Fiverr38.com are weighted using a half-life of 30 days using the formula 0.5p, 30 where p is the number of days transpired since the median date that the poll was in the field. The formula is based on an analysis of 2000, 2004, 2006 and 2008 state-by-state -state polling data. Smoothing the poll results at Bay Silver's method is similar to other analysts' approaches to taking advantage of the multiple polls that are conducted within each state. He averaged the polling results. But especially in the early months of the election season polling in many states is sparse and episodic. The average of polls over an extended period would not reveal the true state of voter preferences at the present time, nor provide an accurate forecast of the future. One approach to this problem was followed by Pollster.com. If enough polls were available, it computed a locally weighted moving average or lower. However, while adopting such an approach in his own analysis, Silver reasoned that there was additional information available in polls from similar states that might help to fill the gaps in information about the trends in a given state. Accordingly, he adapted an approach that he had previously used in his baseball forecasting. Using nearest neighbor analysis he first identified most similar states and then factored into his electoral projections for a given state the polling information from similar states. He carried this approach one step further by all also factoring national polling trends into the estimates for a given state. Thus, his projections were not simply based on the polling trends in a given state. Furthermore, a basic intuition that Silver drew from his analysis of the 2008 Democratic Party primary elections was that the voting history of a state or congressional district provided clues to current voting. This is what allowed him to beat all the pollsters in his forecasts in the Democratic primaries in North Carolina and Indiana, for example. Using such information allowed Silver to come up with estimates of the vote preferences even in states for which there were few if any polls, for his general election projections for each state. In addition to relying in the available polls in a given state and similar states, Silver estimated a 538 regression using historical voting information along with demographic characteristics of the states to create an estimate that he treated as a separate poll. This approach helped to stabilize his projections, because if there were few if any polls in a given state, the state forecast was largely determined by the 538 regression estimate. Additional aspects of the methodology are described in a detailed fact on the Fiverr38.com website. Senate races in July 2008, the site began to report regular updates of projections of 2008 U.S. Senate races. Special procedures were developed relying on both polls and demographic analysis. The projections were updated on a weekly basis. Swing State Analysis The site presents an analysis of the swing states, focusing on so-called tipping point states. Tipping point states are those states that tip the outcome of the election from one candidate to the other. In each simulation run, the winner's states won are lined up in reverse order of victory margin by percentage. A simple algorithm selects the minimum closest states that, if switched to the loser's side, would change the election outcome, then weights that runs significance based on the margin of victory in the popular vote. Thus, the closer the popular vote, the fewer the number of tipping point states and the greater the significance of that run in assessing tipping point importance. For example, the 2004 election's sole tipping point state was Ohio by this method, while 1960s were Illinois, Missouri, and New Jersey, even though Hawaii was the closest state race. Final projections of 2008 elections in the final update of his presidential forecast model at midday of November 4, 2008.
Silva projected a popular vote victory by 6.1 percentage points for Barack Obama and electoral vote totals of 349 or 353. Obama won with 365 electoral college votes. Silva's predictions matching the actual results everywhere except in Indiana and the 2nd Congressional District of Nebraska, which awards an electoral vote separately from the rest of the state. His projected national popular vote differential was below the actual figure of 7.2 points. The forecast for the Senate proved to be correct for every race. But the near stalemate in Minnesota led to a recount that was settled only on June 30, 2009, in Alaska. After a protracted counting of ballots, on November 19, Republican incumbent Ted Stevens conceded the seat to Democrat Mark Begich, an outcome that Silver had forecast on Election Day. And in Georgia, a runoff election on December 2 led to the re election of Republican Saxby Chambliss a result that was also consistent with Silver's original projection.